I just don't understand why they have left me with no option. Surprising and outrageous medical bills. Some Coloradans are finding out their surgery is covered by insurance, but the anesthesia is not. I'm caught in the middle between the doctor and the insurance company, and that is not right. Tonight, Denver 7 Investigates is looking for answers as Coloradans struggle to navigate their own cost of care. It's really tough on our patients. And holding police accountable. Any profession, any line of work, and, and uh, every industry is subject to independent review. Congressman Jason Crow is calling for more police reform in our nation's capital. What it could mean for use of force investigations here in Colorado. We know in every other aspect of American life and almost any other job and profession that independent review increases accountability and gets you better outcomes. A near record high to round out the work week, and we have changes on the way. Scattered storms this weekend, a very wet Mother's Day, and then a soggy start to next week. And that's why we're under a Denver 7 Weather Action Day, getting you prepared ahead of the incoming moisture. Look who it is. It's Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson to kick things off tonight. Mike? <laughs> Uh, we meet again. It's hard to believe with 86 for a high here today and low 90s Pueblo and La Jada that we are talking about cold rain and even snow in the Denver area over the next few days. Right now, temperatures are still really mild under a mostly clear sky. 64 downtown, 64 at Fort Collins, 66 at Greeley. Out west, it's in the 60s and the mountains, mostly in the 50s, although Leadville's a little cooler at 37. We've had a few gusty thunderstorms around earlier. They've pretty much diminished or moved off into Kansas, but this is the next front coming in. It's right at Salt Lake City now. There's another one after that, so it's a one-two punch coming up for the Mother's Day weekend and early next week. Cooler tomorrow, some after showers and maybe a little thunder tomorrow. Cold and wet early next week with some snow possible in Denver. I'll have details in a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. Huge medical bills are catching Coloradans off guard. Unexpected complications are leaving patients with few options, but a ton of questions about their cost of care. This is a major issue affecting one of the state's largest insurance companies. Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski has uncovered the last minute surprise that patients are facing before surgery. I thought it was completely outrageous. Sue Henry, easily over 50, has completed a lot of puzzles during the pandemic. Didn't know until a week or two before my surgery. How do you feel about it? Ticked off, dumbfounded, smacked. But her latest puzzle became impossible to solve. I have an in-network hospital and an in-network surgeon and the guy in between that's going to make me comfortable is out of network. Sue's world got very complicated days before surgery at Littleton Hospital. A call from her anesthesiologist saying he was out of network. I thought about asking them if there was an in-network liquor store so I could bring in a bottle of whiskey and a bullet to bite on. I kind of panicked. Anesthesiologists are not cheap. She tried to find a less expensive in-network anesthesiologist. I searched within 50 miles of my zip code. Denver 7 Investigates went searching for answers and quickly discovered that Sue isn't the only one having this problem. It's just desperately unfair to have networks that are so small that you can't find an anesthesiologist in 50 miles. Dr. Anna Wyan is the president of the Colorado Society of Anesthesiologists. What does this mean for patients? It's really tough on our patients. To put this in perspective, here's what's really going on. A conflict over contracts between insurance companies and doctors that's what's leaving patients with this new, unexpected cost. For Sue, after her surgery, her insurance company sent her what looked like a bill. And what does it say? It says the out-of-network benefits here. Telling her she'd have to pay up to $1,200 in out-of-network costs. That's a lot of money. I'm retired. The insurance companies are cutting contracts, limiting who can be in their network. Wyan points to a survey from last year by the American Society of Anesthesiologists. It found that insurance companies terminated contracts with more than 40% of the anesthesiologists who responded to the survey, essentially forcing them out of network. Is this about making more money? It's not a case of the anesthesiologist going back and saying, hey, we want more money. It's Wyan accuses insurance companies of canceling contracts early and offering the anesthesiologists a much lower rate. Particularly United, which uh, in my kind of experience has been sort of the most aggressive of the insurance companies. And that's not all. 
The disputes are now at the center of a legal battle. U.S. Anesthesia Partners filed this lawsuit in March in Denver District Court. It accuses United Healthcare of offering surgeons in Colorado approximately 50% more compensation in exchange for not using their anesthesiologists. Writing, United is like a boa constrictor squeezing from all angles. There have been a number of lawsuits nationwide. In responding to the accusations and the lawsuit, United Healthcare says the claims in the lawsuit are completely meritless and accuses them of a money grab. It says U.S. Anesthesia Partners was demanding to be paid rates that are more than 70% higher than the median rate and blames the anesthesiologists for surprise billing. Two sides arguing about bottom lines, leaving patients puzzled and caught in the middle. Between the doctor and the insurance company, and that is not right. I just don't understand why they have left me with no option. Days after Denver 7 Investigates started asking questions, the anesthesiology group took a closer look and took care of Sue's bill. But this is an ongoing issue for patients across Colorado, and one doctor say they're in talks with lawmakers about potentially solving. I'm Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. United Healthcare says it has more than 400 in network anesthesiologists in the Denver Metro, but it encourages patients to call the number on the back of their insurance cards before having surgery. And we took a deeper look at what you should do if this is a problem for you. The Division of Insurance says you need to work with your insurance company, and if you don't, you could end up having to pay that out of network bill. And here's something else to note. Colorado recently passed legislation to prevent consumers from getting surprise medical bills, but we found it doesn't apply to all plans. You can read that part of the story right now, in fact, on the denverchannel.com. In the meantime, if you've been in a similar situation, we'd love to hear your story. The email address is contact7 at thedenverchannel.com. A Longmont man is in jail in Thailand, accused of murdering his pregnant wife. This is video of police taking Jason Balzer into custody yesterday. Thai police say he confessed to stabbing 32-year-old Pichaporn Kidjob, who was from Thailand, then dumping her body in a trash can, taping it up, and pushing it down a ravine. She was three months pregnant. In 2019, Balzer accepted a plea deal in Boulder District Court and escaped charges of attempted murder and strangulation. Based on information we've gathered, it appears the woman murdered this week was the same as the one assaulted two years ago. If convicted in Thailand, Balzer could be put to death. We have seen the videos, we've heard the stories, and today Democratic Congressman Jason Crow introduced a bill to hold police accountable when force is used. Denver 7 CB Cotton takes a deeper look at the plan. Okay, let's stop. Come on, come on. Stop, I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. Two Colorado arrests separated by just over a year and joined together by the national spotlight they put on the state. We shouldn't be surprised by things continuing to happen unless we do something to change it. Uh, it, it you know, things will continue to happen unless you correct course uh, and you change policies. Democratic U.S. Representative Jason Crow says he's fighting to do just that by introducing the Use of Force Accountability Act. Filed on Friday, the bill would require states to have a law mandating independent investigations after any use of force that results in death or injury. If you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're accountable to review boards and regulatory agencies. We know in every other aspect of American life and almost any other job and profession that independent review increases accountability and gets you better outcomes. Uh, and policing is no different. Specifics of the bill also mean states that don't comply with establishing a form of independent review would have their federal grant money through the Department of Justice withheld. So in this case, it's the COPS uh, grants and the JAG funding. Uh, and if departments and states want to continue to receive uh, that funding, then they have to implement laws and a process to conduct uh, internal reviews uh, or independent reviews, which are then referred to their internal affairs departments. The independent review of an officer's actions could come from another law enforcement agency, a citizen panel, a state attorney general, or local prosecutors. The system right now as designed uh, uh, means that most departments uh, police themselves. And that's not 
uh, bringing us uh, very good results. Here in Colorado, Denver has its own citizen oversight board, and in Aurora, the Community Police Task Force just last month recommended to City Council that an independent citizen's oversight office with subpoena power be established. Meanwhile, Crow believes more progress needs to happen statewide and across the nation. We have to look at every uh, element of the reform that's needed and, and push it as, as hard as we can. Representative Jason Crow says he was in touch with Elijah McLean's mother while crafting the bill. He also says he has the support of the Aurora NAACP. We reached out to several unions and associations that represent law enforcement officers, both statewide and nationally. None were able to provide comment. CB Cotton, Denver 7. Together, we will make Denver Public Schools a world-class public education system. The top candidates vying to lead the state's largest school district have been named. Tonight, a deeper look at their backgrounds and what the community wants to see in their next leader. A leader who also brings awareness within racial equity and implement anti-racist policy within the district. It was a beautiful day today, but this cold front's gonna change everything. Just how much rain and snow we're going to see. Plus, Red Rocks is reopening, fans are back watching the Nuggets and Abs in person, so when are Broadway shows coming back to Denver? 